for our Molly Karam question of the episode. Who has more to lose and who has more to gain? What are the legacies going to be for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Giants um, with a win or a loss in this game? For the Giants, um, the Cinderella story lives on. Because I think, I mean, the Vikings game, I think a lot of people were kind of 50-50 on. But if they beat the Eagles, nobody's going to pick the Giants to win this game. Nobody. I don't think anybody in the right mind. The Eagles, on paper, have the best roster, arguably in the NFL, outside of maybe the 49ers. So... The Giants winning this game, this is a already a monumental successful season. But at that point, I think it solidifies Brian Dable as the coach of the year, especially if Daniel Jones goes out and plays another game like he played last week. Daniel Jones becomes a playoff performer. Yeah. For the Eagles, if they win this game, it's one step closer to the ultimate prize for a team that's been the most dominant team in the NFL all season. They really haven't skipped a beat. The two games that they lost with Gardner Minshew, he wasn't even there. Jalen Hurts has was 14 and one this season. So I think another Jalen Hurts performance, if he goes on, was an all-time great performance. Cause let's remember that last year he played against the Bucs, a much better Bucs team that we saw this year. Struggled against them, but hey, you know what? He's gotten that step from season two to season three has been monumental. If Jalen Hurts goes into this game and plays an all-time great performance, I think he can potentially leapfrog in the top five conversation. And potentially. Depending on how Patty Mahomes plays, slots himself as an MVP. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's tough because you're technically not supposed to include the playoffs in these awards, right? But you have to. voters definitely do. They definitely factor in. There's definitely a vibe you get from that. So I definitely feel the giant sentiment where I feel like Brian Dable is a lock just because people are calling you trade Saquon Barkley, let him get somewhere where he can compete. They thought it was a re they thought this was like a three year rebuild for so for the Giants, tremendously overachieved dominated a nfc um east team where it was you were getting your ass kicked by the cowboys you were in two dog fights with the commanders you got obliterated by the eagles and you just kept pushing kept chipping away and then if you can turn it full circle and then beat the eagles and upset their season and then it's cry eagles cry i mean it's probably one of the best moments in Giants history besides beating Tom Brady twice in a Super Bowl. So the Giants would solidify themselves as the ultimate spoilers in NFL history. For the Philadelphia Eagles, I feel like they would validate everything. Nick Sirianni gets validated as a coach of the year candidate. And I think Nick Sirianni should be the coach of the year because he's the um, coach of the best team in his conference. And he had the best record in the NFL with the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, alongside the Kansas City Chiefs. So I feel like Nick Sarianni definitely has to be in the running for Coach of the Year as well with how he turned a seemingly toxic and disastrous Eagles situation around to the number one seed in two years. Jalen Hurts has been more accurate this year, more decisive with his throws. Obviously helps when you have A.J. Brown, but hey, Patrick Mahomes had Kelsey and Tyree Kill, Brady had Randy Moss and Rob Gronkowski. What can you do? You can only play with the weapons you have, and he's maximized the potential of this team it would solidify himself probably as a top five quarterback where you go Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Lawrence, and Hurts in whatever order you like and probably push him above Lamar Jackson, make that a legitimate debate, especially if he's able to win the conference championship. 